Readers. Reviewers. Countrymen. Lend us your ears. And a huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Thank you to the Pit Fighters, the First Swords, and all of the Bright Stars. Truth and Courage. Hello and welcome today. I am Will. Well, I'm always Will, but today I'm going to be talking about what I intend to read during May, and so is Ed. As He's not here again yet, so I've not left back to uni yet, but I will be very, very soon, and so I'm recording this whilst I can to talk about what I intend to read during the month of May, and then Ed will be doing a video separately, I believe, of Sadie, talking about what they intend to read during the month of May as well. But today, this is about what I intend to read. I've got quite a few exams. It's exam season at university, and so it'll be a bit of a weird one. I still think I'll be able to get a lot of reading done, because part of it will be for uni, and also... At the beginning of the month, I've got a lot of spare time, and obviously, whilst travelling as well, Durham is a six hour train journey. So, whether uh, my parents, Papa Quinn included, very kindly drive me up there, that'll be about seven, eight hours. And so, that's a lot of reading time to get done. So, maybe I'll still get a lot done, maybe I'm being too ambitious. But anyway, aside from that, this is what I intend to read during the month of May. First up, I've got a book that I've been waiting to read since it came out a few months ago and I need to give it the time it deserves. This is Empire of the Downed by J. Christoph, book two of the Empire of the Vampire. I believe it's the Empire of the Vampire trilogy. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, this is book two of that series, Empire of the Damned, book... Empire of the Vampire, sorry. Book one. Where is it? I don't know where it is. Uh, there it is. I don't know why I couldn't see that. Book one is absolutely extraordinary. We have a video actually on the Brothers Gwyn channel. Look at that. And so you can check that out to see what our thoughts are. Basically in short, we both loved it. And so I cannot wait to read Empire of the Damned. I've heard that there's some uh, big decisions made here by Jay Christoph, but people for the most part think it pays off. So I'm really excited to read it. This is epic fantasy, but it feels so original. It's quite rare that you get a book that feels this unique and different and fresh from everything else that you pick up. And yeah, even if you need like to, if you feel a bit bogged down with fantasy, usually I'd say read a different genre to kind of get back into the reading and that uh, reading kind of, uh, what's the word? Reading slump, that's it. But I think this is one you could read as well, Empire of the Vampire at least, because it is so different from everything else I have read. And so yeah, book one on the list for May is Empire of the Damned. And then next up, the only other one that I have physically to show off here, is Edward III, which this is one of the Penguin Monarchs collection, which is a concise history of the kings of England. And so this one, of course, is about Edward III, whose reign, as it says here, was from 1327 to 1377. So I discovered these through the word of Michael Kiss over on TikTok. He's got great videos. He talks a lot about non-fiction as well as fantasy, sci-fi, etc. Quite a wide variety, but mainly specialising in the historical side of things. And so one of my modules at Durham University for my history side of things is covering the period from 1300 to 1500 in Europe. And so for a bit more specific knowledge, I'm going to be reading this. And so that is what I was talking about earlier. Some of my uni reading and preparing for exams will play play into what I talk about today. Next up I have something that I'll be listening to via Audible and that is Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. I thoroughly enjoyed Legends and Lattes last year. I have got a review of that on my own channel, William Gwynn. Unique name, original name. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. If you're looking for epic fantasy with really high stakes and the hundreds of characters that are well to really dive into and mull over for weeks and months, don't read Legends of Lattes. This is, well, book one is about an orc who wants to set up a coffee shop. Yeah, it's unique to say the least. And I've heard Bookshops and Bone Dust is great as well. And it's kind of following that kind of very light fantasy feel, but it's got heart to it as well. And so I've heard that a lot of people have enjoyed this as much as they enjoyed book one. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back diving in with Travis Baldry's prose, which is very smooth, efficient, quite humorous, quite playful. And it's very different to other fantasy out there. So I'm looking forward to diving into that. Then I have In Cold Blood, so this is non-fiction about a murder, but it's in the novel section for my English reading at university, so I'm not sure. It's meant to be quite uh, influential, so I'm looking forward to getting into In Cold Blood to find out why people talk about it so much and why it is seen as very important to the history of the novel form. So yeah, that would be very interesting to dive into, some non-fiction, some more for uni. And then next up, I've got Arthur by Giles Christian. So I'm very lucky to have early access to Arthur, the third book in the Arthurian, Arthurian Tales, which at the moment I believe 
Maybe this will be the last book. Maybe it won't. But book one is just out of shot. It is called Lancelot. And book two is Camelot. Lancelot, when I read it, it was the first book I ever, ever listened to via Audible, actually. And it's one of the best books I've ever read. It is absolutely exceptional. I know it can feel a bit kind of annoying, just one Arthurian tale after the other after the other. But the ones that I recommend are The Warlord Chronicles by Bernard Cornwell and The Arthurian Tales by Giles Christian. Lancelot is absolutely incredible. He manages to give such a different take to the Arthurian legends in a way that feels very historically real and visceral. And it is so engaging and so moving whilst still keeping the aspects of the Arthurian legend that we know and love but he adds a fresh spin to it he weaves a new tale from the threads we already have so of course i cannot wait to pick up arthur and i'm privileged to be able to have early access to book three and i cannot wait to read it and also the cover just looks awesome i love that green it just it really pops and so yeah i'm looking forward to seeing that in the flesh and another book that i'm very lucky to have early access to is storm crow by ben kane and so this is norse historical fiction i believe it is set in the ninth century in ireland and it is about a pursuit for vengeance ben kane norse vengeance three things that mean i will be there and i cannot wait to read this and then last uh, oh no yes actually last up is the shining which is of course by stephen king the king of horror so I've read about seven or eight books by Stephen King and overall I've loved 90% of them. I, I think that he's just an incredible writer. It's weird. I almost feel that he's so famous that he's almost underappreciated, even though that feels a bit counterintuitive. But I feel like people don't really respect what an incredible writer he is. I think he's one of the best character writers out there, especially the wide array of characters he can bring to life from children to teenagers to adults to the elderly as well he goes throughout the board and he just knows how to bring them to life he's incredible at character quirks and so i was wondering what shall i read first the green mile the shining and talk to a few people and they said shining do that first and i believe it may be his most read book maybe i'm wrong there but i think it's also his most successful film uh and maybe shawshank redemption actually is a bit more but the shining very successful film very successful book lots of people love it it's one of the kind of pinnacles of stephen king's works and so i cannot wait to dive in and for a lot of stephen king lovers out there any who are watching this channel please let me know where you would rank this among your favorites for stephen king and also so far my favorite books by stephen king are later and oh this is where it gets difficult hmm um misery actually yeah misery and later probably and so maybe my book reviews out there i know that you know everything basically there is to know about stephen king so with later and misery as my favorites what would you recommend i read after the shining by king I'd be very interested to hear but everyone that is everything i and i intend to read during the month of may and so as i said i will be back at uni so videos may be a little bit sparse on the brothers grim but we do have some things planned and i'm looking forward to once summer hits really getting a lot more reading done and on the channel we'll be going back to doing quite a few more reviews and hopefully we've got some exciting things coming up with chats with people etc so yeah there'll be more news about that to come but that is what i intend to read during the month of may uh books that releases of 2024 such as empire of the damned i cannot wait to really buy into and then some non-fiction such as this edward the third i'm really getting into a lot more non-fiction lately and i'd love to hear your recommendations on that as well it was a oh, ah, it was a kind of throughout which to pick up i was out of henry the fifth or edward the third but i do know that dan jones's biography on henry the fifth will be coming out later this year i believe in september and so i thought i'll read a bit about edward the third now and then i can wait a little bit uh, for dan jones's take on henry the fifth which i really cannot wait to pick up because dan jones whether it's his historical fiction or his non-fiction i think is an incredible writer he's really got a way to suck you in and yeah it's bad for the bank account because i think i've got most all of his non-fiction works as well as his historical fiction as well but yeah i've been yapping on long after i've talked about the final book there but yeah that's what i intend to read during the month of may let me know what you intend to read and everyone i hope you stay safe please let me know how your reading is going in the comments below truth and courage the brothers gwyn